It's a story that seemed to confirm the worst impressions people have of Boston. Seventh graders subjected to racist abuse during a visit to the Museum of Fine Arts. Two weeks in, the incident is still generating headlines, but the media seems fuzzy on the details. Adam has more. The early reports were damning. Students subjected to racism during a field trip to the MFA, including a racist trope from a staffer. And several students mentioned that the lady said, no food, no drink, no watermelon. And according to teacher Marvell and Lamy, it didn't stop there. This lady, our patron, walks in and she's like, um, these effing black kids are in the way. Lamy also said the group was trailed aggressively by guards who told them not to touch the artwork, even as white students did. That account was treated as fact or representative of a bigger damning truth. As the MFA investigated, WBUR's Maria Garcia tweeted, Do we really need confirmed details? Museums have historically been hostile to people of color. Then the MFA announced its findings. The Museum of Fine Arts in Boston says that it has now banned two museum visitors for making racist comments. But the museum's investigation also cleared its employees. The guards did not single out the students. The staff are telling investigators they actually said no water bottles. I'm also confident that the staff member said what they say to every other group. Still, the narrative is now fixed. WBUR continued to report that the students were harassed and racially profiled. And when the Boston City Council called for a hearing, saying the students encountered racism from patrons and staff, the media didn't push back. Well, Adam, we've been talking about this for the past few weeks, and there's, you know, it's a very touchy issue. Yep. And the, the MFA did this investigation, admits that these two patrons, they saw it. Uh, they have it Yeah, they went back, too. and apparently um, the video's pretty But they damning. did the same thing with the other persons, if they, whether the staff trailed them, you know, treated them differently than white people, um, and whether the guy, the woman at the door said watermelon or water bottle. And it appears that that was not true. And yet... There's this temp. I, 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 there's this almost like this. We, we fall into this narrative that oh, this is Boston. It's, it's Mauricio. It has to be this way, and everybody just kind of followed that suit. It seems that way. I mean, it, from the the vantage point of the kids and the the teachers who were with them, the distinction between staff and patrons isn't that important, right? If you're a seventh grader and something is said to you that that leaves you bawling when yeah. you go to a place you've never been before, it doesn't really matter yeah. who said it. It mm -hmm. happened in this place. I would have a hard time with the coverage if I were someone who worked at the MFA because I think that the, 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 there has not been an eagerness to size up whether the claims about the institution and the institution's representatives were legitimate. It's come out that you know, the museum has said in a very delicate way, we don't believe that what was claimed about our staff actually happened. I understand why they're not pushing back harder from an institutional yeah. point of view, but I do feel like the media should present a slightly more nuanced mm -hmm. picture of this than they did at the beginning and that they uh, continue to, I think, right now. Well, isn't this um, something that we often see with stories around issues of race, where mm -hmm. I I if it feels like it should have happened that way, then we kind of go all in on the story? And I think the reason why a lot of news organizations do this is because to question something like that could put you in the crosshairs of those who are saying, oh, so what? So now you're racist because you don't believe what, what these kids or what this organization is saying? And I think that's the bigger issue. We're, we're afraid to, to um, ask tough questions in, in stories or cases like this. For, for fear of coming under attack ourselves. I agree with you. I think that's one of the big dangers. In asking the tough questions, did this really happen, it's very easy for that to be seen as, okay, they're defending mm -hmm. what these patrons and what these employees did. Um, I also don't really think this story was so much about Boston. Sub in the Met, sub in any other major, major traditional museum, and you could have this exact same story. So um, I think the media is obligated to report things as it happens. And in this kind of 24-7 constant news cycle, you don't necessarily have all of the investigative results right away, but they need to keep reporting those things as they come in, and they need to change their mm -hmm. narrative and keep it updated with, yeah. the, I mean, with the new results. I'm surprised somebody hasn't found out who the patrons are, found out who the person at the door was, really go after this on a factual basis, because mm -hmm. a lot of that reporting came off of Facebook.
I mean, it came off of. Well, Zed they're reporting Peterson. about the claims. I think it might be hard to track yeah. down mm -hmm. the the patrons who apparently did say some yeah. pretty bad stuff. Yeah, that yeah. would be hard. I mean, a couple of things here. First of all, some of this did happen. We yes. know that the the patrons said what they said. Um, I don't personally have a hard time believing that the uh, guide said water bottle instead of watermelon. That mm -hmm. sounds like uh, that's probably true. But I think that the aggressive trailing by the security guards is very much in the eye of the beholder. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can really prove that one way or the other. Uh, the other thing that I, I think is at work here is that the museum, although they did their own investigation and they um, clarified some of the details, really didn't push back no. very hard. They didn't and dare. No, they didn't dare. And I think that the media feed off yeah. of this side says this, that side says that. And in a situation where the museum is saying, well, it didn't really quite go down that way, but we agree that we need mm -hmm. to do a better job, what is the media really going to do except go with that and say, okay, we'll move on to the next thing? Except that it has spawned a whole lot of stories around it, a lot of op-eds, a lot of very yep. emotional oh. pieces. Outrageous cookie. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, maybe, yeah. maybe it's just, uh, you know, at, when this happens, say, present both sides and then say, you know what, there's still a lot of questions around this. And mm -hmm. there is potentially videotape that we'll go back and look at um, to verify, raising some sort of slight questions that we don't want mm -hmm. to, you know, mm -hmm. cast just to out. Just expand really briefly on the point that you made, I think that we see this dynamic around stories involving race. We also see it around stories involving gender, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes stories involving sexuality. I, I think we are at a moment right now culturally where due to enhanced sensitivity about the plight of mm -hmm. many marginalized populations, how different it is to go through life as someone who isn't yeah. a straight white male, there is a real reluctance to apply kind of standard issue critical faculties to any claim of victimhood. And I think that at least for the media, it always makes sense to say, we, we got to figure out what happened mm -hmm. here. And then maybe you write the big think picture about what it means. Yeah.